Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art and Talks Impression Show. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Leslie Stu, the host for Impression. We just wanted to thank our Art and Talk community for your continued support. We appreciate it. Thank you for spreading the word about our platform and for watching our artist interviews. We hope you're enjoying them and always drawing inspiration from them as well. And a huge thank you to the amazing artists that have come aboard Art and Talk to share your art, creativity, and passion. It's been such an honor to connect with you. Thank you so much. All right, so today our guest is a visual artist and she's an expressionist painter and her current focus is on figurative art and human emotions. And we'll be looking at an example from this series. And we'll also be having a conversation and also be looking at her current project, which is in focus and in progress called The Emotional Me. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Kim Frumo. Hi, Kim, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. No, it's our pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, Kim, if we could start out um, with a little bit of your background in regard to your formal training. You received your bachelor's at Cleveland State, and then you also went on to uh, study at the Cleveland Institute of Art, and then from there moved into graphic design for many years. Can, can you tell us a little bit about your trajectory in that area? Yes, of course. Yes, a little bit. It's it's all over the gamut of the art field, but um, tons of experience, that's for sure. Um, I actually started um, at the Cleveland Institute of Art, and then I transferred to Cleveland State. Um, so I, I got time in foundation arts with the Cleveland Institute of Art, and then I had um, received my degree in drawing at Cleveland State. And then I went back, you know, for continued studies. I also assisted the director of continued education. So I worked in in the gallery fields, you know, of art for a while. Um, I was raising my family, so I was uh, working uh, as a graphic artist because I love computer, computer art and design. So I did that for many years. Always doing studio art, but it wasn't as much as now, of course. Um, but I ended up coming back to my foundation of painting and drawing, which is, is my heart, of course. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing the last, probably the last almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, your, your formal education, um, how has that shaped you as, as an artist? Uh, it has a huge impact. Um, the competition that I, those instructors were just incredible artists, you know, and technical skill drawing and painting. You know, a lot of them came from New York City. They studied at Parsons, you know, the top uh, Cooper School of Design. I mean, it just was such a great environment to jump into as a foundation. Um, I know my current work is not as technical as it used to be, but you know, having that foundation and that's to springboard off of just was very great. I have a, I'm a very um, old fashioned Renaissance kind of love of art and paint. And um, you can tell that sometimes, but I'm starting to move, you know, into the, the expressionistic painting of uh, away from that, but you can see hints of it uh, here and there. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it sounds kind of off the bat, Kim, that your, your art is kind of organically, naturally kind of moving into like this expressionist, little bit, you know, looser, you know, still bringing in the foundation of your art, but kind of moving into this um, kind of like highly charged emotion um, yes. with, with your paintings and of course incorporating your, your love of drawing. Yes, yes, exactly. And um, a big part of it is, is a lot of the emotion I get from the medium. So I take a lot of time to choose the canvas or paper, the textures, whether it's handmade paper, like that brings to me almost a greater um, importance than the content of what I'm, the subject matter. Um, so I spend a lot of time with that. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to you the medium that you're using and then um, as you said in your bio marrying that to the subject matter and to really create some type of profound piece the way it looks and the way it feels yes exactly yeah i feel like they're connected there that the image will connect with the like the background that you see behind me that background was done before i created that image it came from the background so I really look into 
the tones of the paper, the shading, what does, what do I feel from that, you know, and then, then that brings that content forth. Um, so it, it does, it kind of marries them and sometimes it contrasts, but at the same time, there's a relationship between the two, for mm -hmm. sure. Yes, oh, that, that is so beautiful. And I, I love how you describe that. So the, the way the surface is, the, the characteristics of it and the way that you treat it is actually determining yes. the, the content or the subject matter that you're then going to paint. Yes, exactly. The texture of paper and canvas, and I don't know how many artists pay attention to that, it creates uh, that texture of the medium, like whether it's ink or acrylic, um, it creates its own energy and vibration and how like water and oil, how they'll dance, you know, that kind of thing. But I really pay attention to that. And sometimes I'll do 10 backgrounds and just they'll be there for weeks until I decide, oh, that would look great as an angelic piece or something. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the process. Yeah, I love you sharing that about your process. Thank you. Yeah, so let's move into these expressionist um, painting series. Um, so it, is it correct that they're India ink and acrylic? The majority, yes. Yep. I always start with some type of tone, whether it's an ink wash or a really rich unsaturated India ink. Um, and then I'll do the acrylic on top or charcoal. I'll, I'll work into it depending on what kind of depth because those tones will give you depth perception. Um, and then I just bring it out with the contrast of a white, of a really light white or, or um, uh, pencil. I can work in with a white pencil as well. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about, before we um, look at an example of one of your pieces, um, the emotionality, the highly charged emotions that are in it. Talk to us about incorporating that into the piece as well. Mm -hmm, sure. Um, well, you know, for years I was doing it and I didn't realize what, what I was doing. And it's, you know, I was going through my own journey of self and figuring life out. And I was working with an art therapist out of Miami, who's incredible, Leah Guzman. And she's like, your pieces are cathartic. And I'm like, I didn't even know what cathartic was. I'm like, huh? Like, what is that? And she's like, no, you're pouring your heart into it. And people can see that, or at least she could see that. And I, it really made me look at it different. Like, oh, okay. I didn't know I was doing that, but it was like my own therapeutic journey. So I really called a lot of the pieces uh, my own, my self journey or journey of the self. Um, and that's kind of what I've picked up recently is expression of like the collective, um, which goes into the distress series. Um, right at the height of the pandemic, that series I had created um, and it just took off where all three pieces seem to encompass a lot of what I felt. Um, the collective was feeling the pressure, the lo losing their jobs and just the emotion of like, what do we do, you know? And I feel like those three pieces kind of, for me, express that. So that's what the Distress series came from. Let's take a look at one of your amazing images of the Distress series. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's, it's pretty big. It's a, almost six foot tall, so it's life size. So it's a pretty big impact. Um, it is uh, paper on canvas, which I loved working with the, uh, the textures that are created. Um, and then of course the figure. And, and a, a lot of people have seen this very different. It's, it depends on how you're perceiving it. It could be someone collapsing from exhaustion or emotional strain. It could be someone praying for guidance. You know, it, it depends on the person. Um, and I really try to, I'd love to connect with the viewer, but let them decide, you know, what does it feel to you? Um, and there's been, I've had people really come to tears and it just struck within them an emotion like wow I've been there you know whether it was happy or sad or whatever um, so that's where I'm currently at with these pieces you know to create an experience to touch you somehow um, and it's not for everyone but the people that it does touch it really makes me feel like wow they, I've, I've reached someone you know which really means a lot to me mm -hmm. and and through touching them could we also use a synonym um, Kim, to say healing as well, would, would that be in the same line? Yeah, 
I feel it is, yes. And that's something I'm working towards, you know, of, of assisting someone uh, into reaching inside and, and really bringing that out of them. There, a lot of people, most of us are carrying around so much, you know, and it's, it's like a silent suffering. Um, so a lot of where I'm, the direction I'm going is workshops or working with uh, people, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an artist, it's anyone that really wants to really touch them inside their heart and, and put it out on paper and or a canvas or whatever their choice is. Um, so that's something I'm trying to create for the near future. Um, and, and it's based off of reactions from people that have seen the pieces. So. Well, that's interesting. So again, another kind of organic approach from reactions that you saw and then kind of saying, okay, you're tapping into something here and then you looked at this as an artist to say, how can I take this a step further? Exactly, exactly. And, it, and my daughter summed it up well, it's a pro pieces with a greater purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, except, and it also goes into the other projects that I have. Um, and this piece actually, which I'm really proud of, was just this weekend projected in a, in a project called um, Exploration Art Now uh, by Marissa Benson out of Miami. It is being, uh, it was projected on the Brooklyn Bridge in New York City. So I'm talking about reaching people like all over. Like I'm, I'm so proud of it that this one, the angel behind me, and in then a, in a third piece was done, and it's it's part of a new project that I'm happy to be, you know, honored to be a part of. Um, so I'm really trying to get these pieces out there so many people can, if it if it connects with them and reaches them, then I'd love to work with someone on in the future. Yeah, that, that piece is absolutely powerful. And I, I love the direction that you're taking this in because it's out like, you know, you kind of went through, even though it's, you know, continuing like, you know, your own, as you said, like journey of the self, the self, mm -hmm. and then it kind of evolved into, okay, more of a collective view of kind of tapping into that, creating art pieces with that, with, with the idea of, of connecting with others and, and then healing as well. Yes, exactly. And I just want to mention that this series is pretty comprehensive. I looked at several of them. And um, in addition to the angels and the distress, there's also some um, other images as well, going into a Native American, going into some deeper spiritual uh, looks. I saw you uh, mentioning the divine feminine and then also spirit daughter. I believe I saw a skull. So there, there's lots going on uh, within this series. There is, a, a, each of them are representative of my own journey and my past and coming from an area that was rich in Native American history. Uh, I'm very in touch with that spiritual side and almost to a fault, you know, I, I really, what I say is I, we ingest, you know, these, all of these things and I'm open to a lot of energies and a lot of things and I take it all in and then I express it. And everyone's like, wait, what? You know, you're all over the place. Like, I'm just expressing what I'm picking up through my life, you know, and um, trying to make sense of that. But it, I'm very sensitive, empathic to a lot of things. So, and that's what comes out and it reaches different people. Some people are like kind of thrown off it, but I can, I'm just putting out what I'm receiving. You know what I mean? As an artist. Yes, yeah, so I love that. And that's really being true to your inner voice and mm -hmm. authenticity. And just like, as you were saying, like almost like being a channel and then your avenue and vehicle yeah. through art. And just like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with this because you have seen that it's helped people. And yeah, it may not be for everybody, but you're going to reach those that you're supposed to reach. And exactly. how does that? Exactly. You got it. You got it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your current project that um, you're in process with, and there's going to be all sorts of different products and whatnot, and it's called The Emotional Me, and we have an image to pull up, so let me pull that up and then have you yeah. tell us about it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's this, it's, it's so funny. This is such a fun project for me because I love cartooning, and it's one another area that I've done since I was five years old. Um, that's finally coming to fruition. And um, this is this drawing. I did this drawing like 20 years ago, maybe. And it was me then, you know, attitude, emotion, mood, you know, the whole artistic stigma of like nobody really understood. So I really felt misunderstood. And it's true today as it is now. And I know why he stuck around, you know, um, he was meant to be an expressive outlook, outlook almost the exact same as 
the distress series just another way of expressing it and it is still part of me and it's really funny like only recently i saw that there's one in the same it's an expression of self it's just a different way of drawing it and um, i always kept them very separate you know if i did a cartoon it had nothing to do with a painting and only recently i'm like no they're right alongside of each other they're they're the same goal the same thing that i'm doing um, so um, it had originally started out as a communication tool between uh, teenagers and their mom or uh, maybe a baby that can't express themselves. You know, I have products that show, okay, I'm feeling really sad today. So this bunny is sad and that little girl could connect with that and tell the doctor or counselor or whoever. Um, but now I feel like it's reaching just the average person. You know, that if I have a shirt with that face on it, it's reaching, someone just came home from the office, it's a bad day, throw on the shirt and like, it says really mood, don't mess with me. You know what I mean? It's an expression without having to say back off <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but these products, they're gonna grow with even more detail. It's very early um, where I really do wanna touch on that deeper level of emotion that people really would like to express. And, and again, I did have a reaction by a businessman came to one of my art walks and saw the crying bunny, which is not pictured here. And he's just like, oh my God, that's how I feel inside. I can't believe you just touched that emotion. And I was like, wow, this is a corporate business man who, you know, probably was told not to ever cry. And he has, he's suffering in silence is what I feel that most of us are doing. Um, so if any of these images resonate with people, I'm all for like helping them express that. And that's the same goal as the other pieces, so. Mm -hmm. And I love how you like putting all the pieces together and, and tying all the loose ends and like seeing the larger picture and saying, wait, you know, all this does relate. And mm -hmm. I love that now, you know, a couple decades later that this emotional need is now like taking fruition, like this is the time now. And it's this cool, bunny character that you created that has all sorts of different emotions it's happy it's sad it's it's depressed it's angry it's yeah. elated. it's like it just runs the whole gamut of human yeah. emotions yeah 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 i'm proud of it and it really i had to go through it in order to get it to this this place so you know i i love anyone that you know i talk to wants to dive deeper into it i i each character has a story you know my life so it's something that I'd love to share with people and uh, hopefully in the future, I'll get to do it even more now that we're getting it out there to the public. Yeah, yeah, that's so beautiful. And I love that you're creating a, a product series so that, you know, it, it can help people like identify, like you were giving the example of the businessman, he, he or she, whomever is viewing it can identify with a specific emotion, a certain way that they're feeling and go back to a sense of self and authenticity and say, this is how I'm feeling. This, this is true, right. this is real no covering it up, no pushing it down, this is it. And then you yeah. also offer an avenue, kind of going back a little bit to um, what we've been speaking about is um, to offering workshops to, whether it's an artist or non-artist, to be able to get that feeling out to as a way of healing it through an artistic um, avenue. Sure, sure. And what I've learned most of it, people that don't, aren't able to reach that, it's a block. It's a block of moving forward in any part of your life. And you have to really face those blocks and remove them and move forward. So yeah, that's that's the bigger goal for me. And thank you for being able to let me express that. This is like one of the first um, times I'm able to really explain it and, and get it out to the public or whoever's listening. So appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. And I, I love this whole field that you're in and um, you know, you're, your your purpose and, and your mission is, is so beautiful, Pam. And of course, your your talent and your skill as an artist. So it's really, <clears throat> excuse me, bringing all of this together. And and then you saying, you know, how you, it's all that you've experienced as well. And then saying, look, you know, you you can be healed through this. Let me help you for those that you know are open to it. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. We do need to move into wrapping the show up. I just wanted to mention. Um, um, and, and to have you um, offer any final comments, but this emotional me with, with, with the money and the different emotions and the products that will be available. Um, so it's in its early stages. So we'll just be staying in touch with you until we see the final product line. 
yeah, yeah. I have a website dedicated to it with the story, emotionalme.com. And then I do art walk in Fort Lauderdale every month. So I'm always there with what I do have, but it's, it'll be growing and I'll be posting for subscribers of the progress and the workshops and everything. So. Yes. Yes. I love that. Well, we do need to wrap the show up. Are there any final comments, Kim, that you'd like to include? Um, I don't think so. I think, you know, some of the, well, I do, you know, all of my progress, uh, things that are going to progress the projects will be on my website. So I welcome anyone to subscribe and I'll keep them updated, but I just appreciate, thank you for having this, this program and, 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 and letting me speak. That's, it's been great. Oh, thank you so much, Kim. <clears throat> it's been a pleasure having you and much success with your expressionist paintings and getting them out there to different uh, places. And then also with your emotional me, um, mm -hmm. project. And again, we'll be on the lookout to see when the finished product line is there and very excited about that. And then your beautiful vision and, and just to, to help others on their journey as well. Much success to you, Kim. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching today's impression show. We appreciate the time you take to watch our artist videos. Do stay connected with us on our YouTube channel and also on our Facebook page. Please subscribe, like, and share. A kind reminder to wherever you are to please support local artists however you can. And we'll talk soon on the next impression. Until then, be well and be kind.